This podcast is going to deal with predicting the products of different types of chemical reactions. In order to be successful at this, you must go through a series of steps. The first thing you will do is predict what is formed in the reaction. You'll get better at this by studying, practicing, and working um, practice problems in class and homework, and also going into the lab. Once you have learned how to predict what is formed, you then write the correct formulas for the reactants and products, and then you balance the chemical equation. There are really only four general types of chemical reactions that you will be dealing with. We will add two more once you have mastered these four general types. That's synthesis, which is the formation of one product, decomposition, which is one reactant, single replacement, where one element replaces another in a compound, and double replacement, where two elements switch places. This podcast is going to deal primarily with synthesis and decomposition reactions. These are very basic and require very little study and very little effort to master. Synthesis reactions, such as this example, make one product. You can see chlorine gas and hydrogen gas have bonded to form one product containing both of these elements, hydrogen chloride gas. Again, you will recognize a synthesis reaction because to the right of the arrow there will be simply one product. Two or more elements will combine to form one product. This can be a very simple reaction, such as a metal element combining with a non-metal element forming a binary ionic compound. This binary ionic compound's formula would be correctly written and then the equation would be balanced. A second example of a very simple synthesis reaction is the formation of a covalent compound, two nonmetal elements. This takes a little more effort on your part. You cannot predict the formula from charges. You must simply have a storehouse and knowledge of some common covalent compounds. You'll get some practice with this as we go through this chapter. Again, you must always balance your equation once you have finished predicting. Nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas would react to form the simple compound ammonia. Once the correct formula for ammonia has been written, then the equation will be balanced. Sulfur and oxygen react to form either sulfur dioxide or sulfur trioxide. We're going to pick the simpler, sulfur dioxide, and the equation is already balanced. There are some more complex types of synthesis reactions that we will look at next. The first three reactions in this list, metal element with nonmetal element, nonmetal and nonmetal, and so on, we've already looked at examples. The three below, metal oxide plus water to yield a base, or a metal hydroxide, nonmetal oxide and water, creating compounds we classify as acids, and metal oxide plus nonmetal oxide, creating ternary ionic compounds. Those are just compounds that contain polyatomic ions. The bottom three are really easy once you see the pattern. You simply do have to do a little bit of study in order to be able to predict these reactions. Again, lithium oxide and water would be classified. Lithium oxide is a metal oxide. Reacting it with water 
should create the base. The base that would be formed from lithium oxide and water would be lithium hydroxide. Once you go and balance the equation, you're done. So looking at the lithium oxide and water, it's fairly simple to see how they combine to form the base lithium hydroxide. Sulfur dioxide and water would be an example of a nonmetal oxide combining with water. Writing the formula sulfur dioxide and water, at this point you don't know a lot of acid formulas, but you can look at this and see that the SO2 and the water form the H2SO3. When you create these simple acid reactions, you will rarely have to balance them and you'll practice enough of them so that it will be fairly easy for you to recognize these types of reactions. SO3, another nonmetal oxide in water, would form H2SO4. Metal oxide and nonmetal oxide, example, sulfur dioxide and lithium oxide, will form the ternary ionic compound lithium sulfate. Again, with practice, you'll easily recognize the combination of these elements that will form these fairly simple compounds that you are somewhat familiar with. Decomposition reactions are simply the reverse of synthesis reactions. One compound breaks down into simpler compounds or elements. One compound breaks down into simpler elements or compounds. The general format is as follows. All of your decomposition reactions can simply be the reverse of the synthesis reactions that you have learned. So if you know your synthesis reactions, then you also have a storehouse of decomposition reactions that you can build on. Again, there are just as many types of decomposition reactions as there were synthesis. If you have a binary ionic compound and decompose it, it will form a metal element and a nonmetal element. That second one should read a binary covalent compound. If you have a binary covalent compound, that should form two nonmetal elements. Metal hydroxides or bases will decompose to form metal oxides in water. Acids will form nonmetal oxides in water, and your ternary ionic compounds will decompose to form a nonmetal oxide and a metal oxide. Going into lab will certainly help you practice predicting the products that are formed. You can memorize them and you can get really good at that, but by observing reactions, that will give you far more experience. Looking at this mercury 2 oxide, the red solid at the bottom of the test tube, as this test tube is heated, we can see evidence of the silver mercury, the element mercury, forming at the top of the test tube as the compound is decomposed. Therefore, writing the formula becomes far more realistic when we can actually see it occurring. We can see the decomposition. We can see the formation of the liquid mercury. Therefore, we know the remaining element on the right also has to include oxygen gas. Potassium chlorate decomposed. Writing the formula for potassium chlorate and then attempting to predict. If you actually saw this reaction, you would quickly see that it's fairly easy to predict what is formed. 
looking at it on paper, it's far more difficult. We can see evidence when the reaction cools down of a solid potassium chloride and we can see evidence of oxygen gas produced during the reaction. That would lead us to this unbalanced equation and finally to the balanced equation. So with class practice, homework practice, and lab practice, you will become quite proficient at predicting, writing, and balancing chemical equations.